So uh, we'll go to the modules and Anastasia is asking about the um, rubric for glamour and makeup. So here it is. This is the lecture, the first lecture. And th I think this is what you were showing me and you said you printed it out. So it looks like this. Right? Is that what you were showing me, Anastasia? I have, I found only these uh, two rubrics, uh, corrective and glamour. Right, so are you look, seeing that on my screen, corrective? No, 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 I just see the information. You don't see the preview? Mm -mm. Uh, oh, that's so weird. Okay, uh, oh, let me do it this way. Sorry, let me, I don't know why you don't see it. I thought that worked that way. Are you, are you, what are you, are you seeing it now or are you still seeing no. it? Okay. Still I, seeing the way that it works is somehow you can't toggle in between. So I have to, I have to either select multiple screens at the beginning or it's so interesting to learn all this stuff, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, like you really wish you didn't have to. All right, so now this is what you're looking at, right? Where did you, so where did you, where, can, where I can find it? All of the bricks. Did you, you have it in your hand, right? Yeah, just the first page, but. That's it. Oh, there's, that's it. There's just one page, yeah. So um, for these first five assignments. Uh-huh. This 10 points evaluates how you've done on each of these individual things. Mm -hmm. okay. The assignment itself all in, I think is a five point assignment, okay, mm -hmm. total. But I needed to tell you, I needed to weight this so you could see um, how you're doing. Like I, if I did 0.5 points, I just wouldn't make much sense. So this is for the makeup we did on Monday. Mm -hmm. Add your good references for your corrective, so the person that you're looking at. Uh -huh. And then um, you wrote your notes on your makeup chart. And mm -hmm. when you get your makeup charts, they're all labeled at the box office in a baggie with your name on them. So you can come and pick them up. I've given uh -huh. you five of oval, and then I gave you a few square ones just in case you're gonna make a different character sometime. Okay. So you need to have, uh, just wanna double check these 25, yeah. right? And what about this, just one? You will get, for every makeup, you will get one of these specifically geared for the makeup. Oh, okay. So this one is just for corrective. You can actually cut it in half. Okay. And when you're going to upload mm -hmm. your assignment, you upload this, uh, you upload your schematic first, mm -hmm. which is your drawing that you can have your character analysis on it. You can say your age, you know, whatever, or you can say this is for a job interview. Mm -hmm. And then all of your notes and recording are filled into your schematic. So these are referencing your schematic, these three. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. So you have your schematic, your um, rubric, uh -huh. your references, which are the top line, you're gonna upload those too and your photo. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that completes your assignment. So you can just cut this in half. And if you don't cut it in half because you fill it out online, just upload it once for corrective and up once for glamour and I will ignore the other part. It doesn't matter to me at all. Okay. And then let, let I believe in modules, you will see exactly how it's organized. So I'll just take you to there. Mm -hmm. And every assignment, and I'll just show you that um, quickly as well. So let me just share this for a sec.
So this is where we found that rubric. For your corrective makeup, this is the assignment where you upload. And if you want, this is the assignment icon, but if you want me to write upload corrective makeup, I can make that more clear. Would that be helpful? Or submit corrective makeup here? Yeah, maybe it will be easier for us. And what word do you guys like? Submit or upload or? Submit, maybe. Submit, okay. I can add that to every assignment because I'll show you how this works. So uh, then for Glamour, you will see this, blah, blah. The Glamour demo starts mm -hmm. at 37.30 on here. Mm -hmm. And this tells you what to upload. Mm -hmm. And you get five points on your grade book for that. And then uh, this is the assignment we're doing today. So here's how it looks, right? That shows you how the 10 points works out, even though you also have that paper copy. This is exactly like the paper copy. Mm -hmm. It's just to give you a reference. So then to um, to go back, I want to just show you a random assignment. And you'll see what I mean. So if I meant going to modules, do you see modules now? Okay, great. So as we go down, I will make more of these. Like, let's just look at thin face. And this is a makeup chart. This is a demo. This is what we are going to be doing. Oh, well, no, let me go to the assignment. So thin face, here's my two uh, looks at a different person, extremely thin face. Here's a discussion of the makeup value chart, which is what I want you to do. And this will help you in the recorded lecture. So let's look at the thin face assignment. Here's the skull. And can you see the skull or no? Yes. This time you can. Okay, that's interesting, okay. So this is to help you show the skull, the skeleton underneath the face. So the, this is jumping ahead a little, but I just want to demo how the information works. And then it gives us the name. We'll talk about this on Monday. Here's my thin face characters or humans to look at, or whether it's a round face or a round face. So it's both thin and round. It's the contrast between the two. Review the lecture, analyze your own face shape, design your makeup, and I'm looking for the rubric. Okay, that's where I thought it would be. Let me go back to modules because it should be on the assignment. And I know they had one last semester. <laughs> Let me just look at what these are like. Hold on. Okay. All right. So I'm going to make sure that I'll say submit thin and round makeup. And then I'll make sure that you know the rubric, where the rubric is. Because each one of these, like that's what I was trying to show you. Here's a middle age practice and rubric. So here's the rubric. This is the, the practice uh, of what we're doing. And then here's the rubric right here. So again, you have one of these little uh, charts to fill out, okay? So does that make sense to everybody? So I, I if since I can't find the thin and round, I'm gonna do that and I'll add the submit to assignments. Hey, Pam. Of course. Uh, it's Cara. Can you um, allow screen sharing? Yes. And then can you put me back in the other room, please? Okay. Got <laughs> Thank it. you. Okay. 
So uh, Anastasia, very good question. That is every assignment has a rubric that you fill out and you evaluate how you did on that. And then you will submit those four items. And there was some discussion in my previous class because Canvas has changed a little bit about how to submit. And it is, if you can do this by just moving everything into a Google Doc, that's probably the easiest way to submit because Canvas likes Google. Does that seem clear to everyone? Okay, so today your goal is to do a glamour makeup. And if we look at the glamour makeup, on our Moodle page, I mean our module, Oh man. We'll go to, uh, we'll go back here and we'll look at Glamour. And what we're going to look at for Glamour over the top, dramatic. So in this character, we see a brighter lip. We see excellent lighting. The camera is at the eye area. So when you're taking your selfie, you wanna be looking at your camera. We talked about that. And it can be an elaborate hairdo. It can be a costume change to bring out your eye color. It is what you wanna do. You're looking at your face shape. And we talked about that last time where people said maybe they're slightly shadowing to give a slightly softer edge to the face. Design a makeup. You want to research two inspirational pictures for that. And then complete your makeup chart. List your products and take a digital photo and fill out your rubric. So that is on every assignment. And I'll just double check to make sure it is. So what? who has a do you got you guys can all screen share have you picked out some glamour images to look at. Let's uh, everyone get two amazing glamour images. And then we will share. We will screen share so you can look for both male and female. Uh, runway shoes are good. You want to create a heightened image. Not just a, you know, not just a, not just something dramatic, but something really outstandingly dramatic. And then be careful that you're not looking at just something that's not achievable because many times what we'll see is a, a photograph that has been really um, enhanced by uh, Photoshop or something like that. And you wanna make sure it's something that's, that doesn't have a filter on it so that you, it's actually achievable. So everyone pick two, you're looking on your computer for that. And then we will screen share. So put them on your desktop and this will uh, really be helpful for you guys to experience this and then put them on your desktop. 
So uh, you have to open them and then you'll have to move your zoom out of the way so that you can actually find those images. You may want to put them into a document. And I will show you mine. Uh, and I'm, I'm picking things that would work for me. So you guys will pick something that works uh, differently for you. So let's take a look at Pam's images. Man, I had so many things open, it is insane. Okay. So let me upload this. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there we go. OK, my mic was off. I just had a helicopter fly by with a microphone saying, warning, get out of the riverbed. There's rain coming. Oh, yeah. it's. Have you not had rain down there yet? Uh, we were supposed to at midnight last night, and it never came. We're waiting for it to come by. We're supposed to get it by midnight tonight. Maybe it looks like 2 o'clock today. Uh, but yeah, by midnight, it's supposed to rain. Be very careful because I heard the LA weather this morning too. They were doing rescues. And you will, uh, in Los Alamos, it was raining sideways. It was so hard. It was very, very, very intense. Yeah, it was one of the like weather reconnaissance helicopters flying by. But yeah. I never heard them give a big warning out to everybody. So, Well, you don't remember, but a few years ago, um, when we had a big flood, there was an RV that floated out underneath the overpass that going into Ventura. Oh, I do not remember that. Yeah, it was really and crazy. I don't know how to, why this is not working. So I'm gonna show you, is everyone ready? To get their images out here. So this is mine. I have to do alternate text for everybody. So that's why it takes me a little bit longer. And you want to make sure that you, you have a large enough image that you can actually see things. So um, I will screen share and I've added them into our Glamour site so you can take a look. And save. So let me go to this and show you the ones that I have picked. Where are you guys? Here we are. Here's my glamour looks. 
So I put them at the bottom. I picked Gold Glamour. So this is over the top, very heightened hair, a very sharp and dark brow, a really extended eye. This is reminiscent of the Egyptian Cleopatra look. And then the gold lip with the lip liner. And then gold is actually highlighting down the nose and coming through to the lip. So I think that's a really fun look. And that would be something fun. And maybe I would say, well, I want to do, try these lips only. And then, but I'm going to try these eyes because this is an older woman. She is not as dr uh, dramatic necessarily as this because look at the skin difference. She's she has older skin, but nonetheless, she has on false eyelashes. She has on a nice blue slate shadow, a medium rose above with a highlight. This is a standard highlight, medium shadow, colored shadow, and then a crease in the eye. This is a typical three shadow layered eye glamour look. A soft line under the eye, again with mascara, but she definitely has false eyelashes on on the top. And then her face, this is where you look at the skeleton from the thin face. You can see that her cheekbones, yes, they're accentuated, but her, her skin is falling away because the collagen underneath the skin is just less elastic than this girl. She has cheekbones too, but she has more plump under her skin. So maybe I'll say I will use uh, these eyes and rouge, but these lips. Okay, and then I'll then I will memorialize that into my schematic, if that makes sense to everybody. Okay, and then you can upload it any way you want. So who wants to go next? I'm stopping my share and you guys each have share. So let's see what you picked. Tyler, did you find some cool guys? Did you pick David Bowie? All right, uh, he's going to look. Go. Uh, so I, I did pick a couple of people, but it's not really, um, I don't think it's really exotic. It, if I'm being honest, I think it looks a little more corrective than anything else. So. Go screen share, let's see what it looks like. Got here. Um, is it this one? I think it's this tab. So, um, the first one I've got it's just a picture I've got of Hayden Christensen. So I just I I looked up glamour shots at first, and half of them were just guys without their shirts on. So I figured I wouldn't do that because uh, one, I don't have abs like that, and two, <laughs> and that's not that class is about. Uh, so then I, I looked up actors and I found two. I found one of Hayden Christensen. It just seems like uh, he's got a hairstyle or, or he's got a length of hair that's a bit similar to mine. Mine's a little bit longer. Um, he's kind of got it in a messy way. So what I'm thinking of doing is maybe mixing it between him and a little bit with like Tom Holland. Um, I mean, I'm I'm still putting together everything. I one thing I noticed on Tom is that he he kind of has his eyebrow at least one of them. I don't know what the other one's doing, but the one of them has kind of that curl up, which I thought was interesting. I'm um, I'm gonna look up David Bowie to get some ideas. Yeah, John, uh, because he does a little bit more. Rockers are good ones for um, glamour, and it, and I hmm. realized too when I was searching and I hadn't experienced that before, but. This idea of taking glamour shots is now a whole industry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Joe Schmo or or Pamela Shaw, I'm gonna go get glamour shots and people pay to go to a photographer where the photographer's artist makes you up and then they take a photograph to make you look like a fashion model. So um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh I uh, actually, I'll show you a couple fashion model shots that I have from a Jose Bear book that I was in. So do look that up while you're doing that. And then we'll let's take a look at yours. But it's, it is different than a glamour shot, which is this sort of marketing tool that photographers have now. Hi, did you want me to go next? Is that what you Okay. Um, alrighty. I'm just putting my pictures into a folder. Um, okay. So, all right, let me screen share. Um, 
one of the reasons I love to have you do this is so you know how hard it is on the other end, you know? <laughs> okay. Stop. So here's one look. Um, okay. Oh, you will. Right. Okay. It has a filter on it, but I think um, I get the gist from it. It's like very old, like, um, I, I get like Hollywood vibes from it. Um, and she has like really exaggerated eye makeup with the lashes and the eyeliner with the wings. Mm -hmm. Um, so I really, I liked that picture. And then I think for like a more fun look, I don't know. I really liked, let me see. Oh no. Wait. Really like yeah, this one. Oh, that's humongous. Wait, that's really oh, that's good. that looks good to us. Okay, okay. Um, good. Yeah. Wait. Um. Yeah. So that's a fun. Um. That's a very fun eyeshadow look with black lashes. Super fun. Yeah. Yeah. I really like it. I think it, it looks like '60s, maybe. Um, '60s makeup. When I really, I really think that is really just like fun. Um, and so, yeah, that's one. And then I, I had like other looks, um, of like Dakota Johnson. Um, but I think I'm like leaning more towards the blue eyeshadow look or the like old Hollywood. Well, the look. Old Hollywood look, this look right here is exact, is a ripoff of, uh, Audrey Hepburn and Breakfast at Tiffany's. Post oh, yeah, I could definitely see that. That's yeah. Both 60s. So you picked things that are just two different expressions in the same time period. Okay, cool. So yeah. Yeah. So okay. you can, you can uh, pick and choose. Okay, cool. Awesome. Alrighty. Nice job. Are you ready, Anastasia? Yes, I'm ready. Let, uh, I think I need to spend more time to find something, but I found really nice picture of men's makeup. Well, so maybe Tyler needs to have that one. Yeah, I really like the eyes. Like yeah, the eyes. very nice. It looks not like a makeup for women, but like for men. So I, I also like how um, somebody highlighted lips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I found this one, but I think I need to find something more interesting. Well, this is interesting. You know, the it has a lot of highlight. Uh huh. Okay. Has a lot of highlight. It also has that really interesting sort of uh bronzy rose eyeshadow and a little bit of maybe slightly blue liner i mean it's kind of pretty mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so you could yeah. take pieces from each tyler's jealous of that great guy yeah tyler this is for you <laughs> yeah yeah so maybe, those are great. maybe i will add more character in this makeup I can improve it a little bit, but it, yeah, I like how it looks. Perfect. A reference picture is just a jumping off point and it helps you, it helps stimulate your creativity. So that's one of the reasons why we do it is that it gives you a creative feeling and you can, um, you can then kind of, if we we're musicians, we'd say we'd riff off of that, right? Because that would be a, um, a nice look. So I'm going to just show you a glamour thing. I'll try and upload this, but here's a book, Jose Bear. There was a, um, you know, a cattle call for this. He's a very famous hairstylist. And this is when I had, when I was in LA and I was actually younger. <laughs> so this is when I was 33. And here's the, my picture of when I first went in and that's when they uh, picked me, right? You go in and you just start, you stand with 200 other people and they choose whether or not they're going to select you. And then they, I'll show you a, a, a color shot. And then he does, you know, a color, a haircut, a something or another. And then you do, you do a glamour photo shoot and they bring in the clothing and everything. And then he, he used you for your book. And so here's the glamour picture. Oh, nice. <laughs> wow. And so, you know, here I am, and here's the glamour me. Uh -huh. 
So you can see that with the contouring, the eye shape, the look at the really strong highlight right down the nose mm -hmm. and then the lip detail. And then I have a small color image of that, which I will show you. So you can see how red they made my hair. Okay. Oh my goodness. So definitely this, 80s or 90s kind of look with oh the yeah. big hair. Oh yeah. Fully, fully 80s. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, you know, that's just to show you that, you know, here's how I walked in. And then they, you know, they did a haircut, a permanent, a color. And I'd use that example, not because I'm in a book, but just because, you know, anybody can do it, right? Anybody can be a glam shot. So maybe I'll actually photo digitize those and stick them on that glamour page for you. <laughs> but uh, so don't be afraid to go exaggerated because honestly, if you saw that woman, this woman right here, you know, I could be a I could, you know, I could be a corporate lawyer, right? So it's just, it's not how I am every day, but it certainly is not out of the realm of reality. But you can push the glamour even a little further than that, and you're not going to have the option of hair color change, you know, but there's things that you can do that will really help it. So one of the things I used to do when I wanted my hair big like this is I used to do tiny, tiny little curls. And this is because I have really fine hair, but I would wrap it around like this. And then like literally around a pencil or a tiny mascara tube and pin them in place. And then I would take them out and I, my hair would be like this because I have a lot of hair, it's just very fine. And then my grandmother had a, she had a curling iron that was this big and she did my whole hair. I could, my hair was, I could, it was, I could sit on it almost. She did my whole hair and it was like this. But you know, that's what that's what this is about. You want to do a wide expression. Okay. You ready to go? Tyler, did you download your worksheet? I tried to uh, right before class, <laughs> but um it turned out to be really small. When I downloaded the sheet, it if I were to print it, it would be like of maybe a fifth of the size of the page, it would be really small. So I'm trying to figure out if I can find the same version of it, but bigger. Or let me see if I can change the aspect when I upload it. You so, can also uh, save uh, it as a screenshot. That's what um, I let me go back and try that then. Because if it's big on your screen, you could save it as a screenshot. That oh. Way. I can actually try that on my phone and then put it on Google Docs and then print it that way. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, uh, but, but, I'll, me. <laughs> so. but I'll definitely find it. It, it won't be a problem. Uh, We're getting used to really, uh, you know, it's great to help each other out with however you find a trick to do something because you know, we've, we are just muddling through and we'll all be better at what we do for sharing what we can find out. So I certainly am finding out a lot of things from you guys. So that's perfect. So um, my phone is showing up the same way. So if I look at the the other two, um, it'll come up full size. It'll come right. up full detail so I can see that. Um, and, and that's for both of the uh, the original ones. But when I click on the uh, the hybrid or the, the com combination, oh. it pops up really small and the uh, the words are too blurred out to see yeah. what they're doing. Okay, so I uploaded that image as a full screen image. And then what I can do is I have some other books here and I'll try and find one and I'll try and upload a better version for you, okay? Um, I've also got, um, I've also got a lot of the, uh, the, the makeup charts on Google right now. I could look for one that resembles that and then print that one out if, if that's okay. You know, just print out one of the ones that's there and draw on it. Okay. You know, that's okay too. We're, it's, it is a work in progress. We do incremental work. Okay. Guys, I'm going to leave you unless you have any questions about how to start. Make sure that your face is clean. Miranda, you look great. And Anastasia, I can tell you guys have taken your makeup off. You're completely smooth. You have moisturizer. Did you moisturize, Tyler? 
I did not, but I did uh, shower right before class. Okay. <laughs> and one thing is that I realized last night I'm taking off my makeup and I thought, okay, my face is washed and all this. And then I did, I have a thing called an eye wipe because mm -hmm. that's my infection. And then, wow, I did that. So much more makeup came off. So don't neglect afterwards really cleaning. So I'm going to leave it to you and I'll check in with the other class. Okay. Don't end. Um, I'm going to pause your recording. There we go. All righty. Um, so I went a little experimental after you had suggested um, something on the lines of like David Bowie. So I, I did find a simple picture. Um, let me double check the picture real quick. He um, he does more like blue. He does like blue. Um, what would you call that? Kind of like the blue blue light around his um, around the upper part of his eyes. Eyeshadow. Blue eyeshadow. Eyeshadow. Thank you. Um, I instead did something a little well, a little different. I took I took my right eye, so I took one eye, and then I did kind of like a um, almost like a um, I, I, I'm not really sure how to describe it. Almost like I did like a longer kind of brow. I used the um, I actually used the uh, the cinnamon color on the contour wheel, which I probably used a little bit too much of, but um, I wanted to give it kind of a somewhat of a closer to natural color than the blue, especially since I didn't have the blue. I'll be right out. Sorry, my door. Um, uh, but I gave it, just kind of did like a little flare for one eye. The other one is fairly normal, except on both eyes. I actually used, though it says eyebrow pencil, I used the black eyebrow pencil underneath uh, the lines of my eyes. Very right. smooth line. Good job. Good job, Tyler. And I see you did a little lip color too. A uh, little bit, just a little bit of the uh, the lip pencil around the edges. And then I took um, took the, uh, the sponge and then just kind of dabbed a little bit to get it to blend just somewhat around the outer edges of the lips. Um, I think I probably should have used just a little bit more uh, or left a little bit more of a definition, but I think I, I think it, it goes it goes well. I think it works. Uh, I used for foundation. I used the natural flare this time. Uh, I I do like it. I think for glamour, it. I, I'm a little bit in a toss up because the other one does appear to be darker and has more like a Californian tan. Uh, but I think this works. I think the natural flare is definitely closer uh, with my actual skin color. Um, and then I use. What else did I use? That's okay. Don't forget to selfie and then write all your products down so that can be translated into your worksheet. Gotcha. Nice job. Thank you very much. And let's go to Anastasia. And I will ask you to, I have to get your video up there. Let's see. There you go. You should be able to start your video. Yeah. Okay. The right light. So as a glamour make for glamour makeup, I decided to use a lot of foundation to make my skin looks uh, you know, smooth. Mm -hmm. And then I put a lot of highlights around my cheeks and my nose. And I decided to add eye lines. Um, not just on the corner, but like all uh, around my eye, eyes. Good. So to, like, to highlight my eyes better. And I also, I usually have smaller eyebrows, thinner. So I decided to make them bigger, thicker. And uh, my lips, I did not, um, I use a pencil but I did not um, make it a smooth line. So I just like, it's more like natural. I don't have a perfect shape of my lips. Right, perfect, nice. So then move back just to, there you go, perfect. And then do side to side. Yeah, very glam. Nice job. And we'll go to Miranda. 
Okay, so um, this is like a lot of makeup, um, which I guess is the point, but I'm just not used to seeing myself like this. Um, so I, I used the um, black eyebrow pencil um, for like this eyeliner part right here. Right. I also did my waterline. Um, and then I used the um, eyebrow pencil for my eyebrows. Mm -hmm. And I also used the lip pencil for the lip liner. And then I had some matte, um, just liquid lipstick that I used for the color. Um, and it, I wanted to do like more natural, like in the picture because the eye look is so crazy. Um, but ugh, the lighting's like, we can see you. We, okay. we can see you fine. One okay. thing that I want to uh, mention about the eye, and you can just, that's actually a perfect place for you to step, to be right there. Mm -hmm. So nice job with the false eyelashes. And then the liner that's above in the crease of the eye, mm -hmm. this is a very common ballet eye because mm -hmm. it opens the eye up. And if you look at the side, turn slightly to one side, you see the open whiteness, which, which creates an open eye feeling from the audience. And then you would put a white in there and then you could put a white under the lower, um, which is, you have three layers of liner. You have the one in the crease, the one on top of the lid and the one at the waterline. Mm -hmm. So between the waterline and the top of the lid, you can put in a white at the corner there also for a wider open look for the stage. Mm -hmm. So very nice job and a good, um, a very good, you know, attempt at doing something way outside your comfort zone. Everyone went really, really far. So good job. Okay, I will. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm going to, um, I feel like it's probably not prudent to try and start this right now. I want to show you the drawing of my worksheet and I'll, po I'll post this online. So here's my schematic that I have done. And just to give you a contrast to my schematic, so you can see clearly, I've just penciled in, so I'm gonna highlight the cheekbone, highlight the nose, down, shadow just under the nose, shadow just under the lip, shadow the edge of the lip to make them thinner, and shadow the top, a crease on the forehead, and then create a center part and bring the hair down, which then elongates the entire face. And then I realized I did not do my eyebrows, so I'm gonna draw those in. And I wanna show you, um, I don't think it's dark enough, but I don't think I'm gonna do, well, I'll just do this. I'm going to draw an arched eyebrow to create a little more of a thin look as opposed to a completely round eyebrow. So you'll see that I've drawn the eyebrow with a series of There you go. So I've drawn the eyebrow with a series of strokes because I'm going to be drawing the eyebrow up. I'm going to have a slight bend to the eye, shadowing under so that I'm creating a thin face. And then I'll put on a narrow lip color. Let me just put that in. So I'm gonna be doing my lip inside of my very narrow lip so that I'll really elongate and narrow the entire face. And you can see that that makes it smaller and narrower. Okay, so this is gonna be my plan. I'll do that first thing Monday. And in contrast to what my plan is for my corrective, you'll see that my corrective is very different. I just did a simple corrective without a lot of contour. And then my glamour is more elaborate. But the difference between my glamour and this, look at the two sketches next to each other, as you can see the extreme highlight and shadow to create the contouring and the thin face. So this is why this is so valuable because now I can just go in and paint by numbers, 
translating my worksheet to my face and just put everything right on. Does that make sense? And then putting the hair where I normally have it as a side part, even just putting the hair in a center part will elongate the face very simply, right? I wanna just talk for a moment about the skull as we have five minutes, so just one second. So it's so much better if you get your computer camera uh, a little bit above your eye line. So when we're looking at our skeleton and you'll see he's on your thin face page and the rubric has now been uploaded, uh, you can see that while his nose is bone to here and the rest of it is cartilage, the eye orbital fossa, which means the orbital socket is, a, is rectangular. But as we're making a thin face and the skin falls away, we're gonna have a darker circle here. The cheekbone will be highlighted here. And then this will be my contour to create this hollow that will go against the teeth. Highlight on the edge of my jawline so that we get a sharp jawline, yet shadow underneath the nose, shadow underneath the lip, and then create this shadow in the top of the brow and I have a shadow indicated on my worksheet that was covered up by my hair. So you see how the face is mirroring the skull. So this is what you want to do for Monday is create a worksheet that looks like a thin face. And then I have also uploaded what a round face was, would be, look like. So do both worksheets for Monday. Okay, questions? And then I'll do a quick demo. Then I'll leave you to do your thin face. And I'm gonna go do a face casting demo for the other class. No questions? Wait, I didn't mute you guys' microphones, did I? No, you're all good. Sounds good. Microphones are good, the cameras are off though. Okay, I can, have, I can put them on. And we'll just... Um, I, I turned off the camera because then when we're recording and I pin you, then we can see you up close. So it really is gonna be great. And take a look at the recording. Tyler looks like the uh, sound device. Yeah, that's, um, I, I found this app that lets me, it lets me connect my phone camera to my computer and apparently Zoom lets it do that too. So um, through that app. So I was able to get a little more of an HD so one thing I want to bring up is that if you want to, you can hide your self view. So I can hide my self view, but you guys can still see me. And that will, sometimes it's less distracting for you when you're doing a presentation that you're not just looking at yourself moving around or going close up or whatever. And that way you can just have a more poised experience because if you were doing something for the theater or the camera, you would not get that instant feedback about what you look like. Because in some ways it makes, it gives a self-consciousness to what you're saying. Does that make sense for everyone? So you have that option if you go up to the corner of your screen and you can hide your self view. And it might help you when in certain instances, rather than just turn your computer, your um, camera off, then you can actually hide that. So you're not looking at yourself when you're talking. So just a tiny tidbit. All right, I'll see you on Monday. Good work, everybody. Thank you. I think I'm enjoying this.